Welcome back to all my erudite magic friends. My name is Jeff Kowalk. Today I have a book for you that isn't particularly new, however it is new to a release to the public. We're talking about Nate Staniforth's Clouds and Kingdoms, which has been around since about 2018, but is finally seeing marketing in a more public forum on Vanishing Inc. If you don't already know him, Nate is a relatively young performer. He's about my age, I think just a little bit older. He is a college circuit performer and has performed at hundreds of universities across the country before he took a leave of absence and went to India where he wrote about his experiences in the book, This is Real Magic. The book we're going to be discussing today is nothing like This is Real Magic and instead is an instructional book about magic for magicians. And he frankly tells you right up front that this is for professional magicians, and I really don't disagree with him. So this is the book. It is a relatively small book. It is uh, paperback and is about 100 pages. There's a lot of different pictures and it's a slightly unusual sized. It's more of a square book than what we're used to as a rectangular book. There are approximately five items discussed in this book. Let's get right into it. So let's talk first about the good. The good is the material. The items in the book are really incredible and will stretch the way you think about the way you perform your magic. Even though there are only really five items discussed, most of them are things that you're not really gonna find anywhere else. Let's take it from the top, the items included in the book. The first one has to do with essentially what started as a bill in lemon plot and morphed into something different where the effect is a person is brought up on stage, they're handed a mystery object, they're seated there with their hands cupped around this mystery object. The performer goes back out into the audience, borrows a bill directly from someone's wallet and proceeds to have them sign the bill, identify the serial number, tear off a corner, then burn the rest of the bill. Eventually, the person on stage is asked to open their hands. They've been isolated on stage the entire time, and in their hands is the original bill with the original serial number, the autographs, and the perfectly matching corner. So it's your traditional bill to lemon without the lemon, which goes to show you some of Nate's incredible thinking on the subject. The way he gets into this effect and ends up doing what I'm going to call the magic part is really incredible and I think could be applied in a lot of different ways. So that's really cool. That's called Dollar and it's the first about 20 pages of the book. The next item up in the book is what's called Phone Call and it's essentially a phoning the wizard type plot. I'm not a fan of phoning the wizard, but Nate is and has always been excited by this. So he has taken this in a slightly different direction where you're going to make a prank phone call, but before you do it, you set it up by asking people in the audience for three different things that we're going to try to weave together a story. Eventually, someone is called up on stage and a prank phone call is placed. The person on the other end of the phone ends up giving the answers to all three things that the audience had called out that they would like to have be part of the story. This is probably different than anything else you've done and isn't your standard phoning the wizard. There's no playing cards involved. And in fact, you can have them call a random number generated by the audience. Lottery Revisited is a short seven page essay on time and tension and how you should release that for maximum effect. He walks you through a few examples and this was one of my favorite parts of the book, in fact, because it helped me to think through how I'm working through some of my material and presenting it to audiences, am I really doing it in a way that devalues the climax or am I building to a tremendous amount of energy to be released? So some pretty cool thinking there, but it's just a simple essay where he doesn't reveal anything about his lottery effect and how it's accomplished, merely the kind of thinking that he put into achieving that effect. Next up is an effect called Constellation, which is more of a method. He gives you about 20 pages where you're going to be able to have someone pick something in secret, whether it's a name 
or a word or something like that, you're gonna drop some matches, paper matches on the ground, and you're gonna be able to reveal what that person is thinking of based on the matches. So the premise behind it is that like many psychics who read the constellation and the stars, you are doing this indoors and you're going to be reading some matches. Now that I live in the Midwest, it's apparent to me why this would be a good idea to perform indoor with matches with the cloudy winters. It's some cool thinking, but it's not really a trick on its own. It is merely a supplement to a trick that you probably already do. Finally, there is a two card transposition, which is really cool. I love the effect. It's not your standard 10 and 13, you know, cards moving back and forth. It's really just one card each and they're both signed. So it's a really neat effect. Both participants, they never come near each other. The performer clearly doesn't do any funny business between the two and yet two signed cards transpose between two different people. It's a really neat effect. So now that I've told you a little bit about the good, let's talk about what I'm gonna call affectionately the not so good. While the first item in the book dollar was incredible, the second item left me a little bit underwhelmed, partly due to the method and partly because it's just not a plot that I find to be super engaging. On top of that, the method that he suggests, I don't want to give away any spoilers here, but it's going to cost you quite a bit more than the already hefty price of the book to pull off. Now, there are other ways that you could do this effect that once you read his method, I think you'll It'll get the gears turning and you'll start to realize how you might be able to pull it off and not have the expenditure that he does. But it's in this section where Nate lost me a little bit. He declares himself to be a maximalist. In other words, he's willing to take the hardest possible path to the effect because in his mind that makes it much more, that much more of a miracle, which then conveys that same energy to his audience. I'm not a maximalist. And in fact, in reading through his method, I thought it was a little bit clunky, a little bit expensive. And I think that there are other ways to achieve the same effect for a lot less effort and money. But that would go completely contrary to what he's suggesting. I'll talk some more about that in a minute. There's a little bit of confusing thinking because, spoiler alert, you're not calling a random person. I don't want to give anything away methodologically, but if you're buying this book, you're really getting his presentation and I don't want to spoil that. But what I do want to say is that it's a little confusing because he relies on the acting ability of someone that he's using. It's not a stooge, but he is relying on acting ability. And then he suggests that you may be able to get someone on Craigslist or Fiverr. So I'm not sure that I really completely agree with that. In addition, I just think that this is really the long way around to achieve this particular effect. And there are some other kind of uh, nitpicky things. When you get to the two card transposition, it's very apparent that at one point he had this written up using two different cards that he was thinking about. Throughout the initial segments, he's referring to the 10 of hearts, the 10 of hearts, the 10 of hearts. And there's a section in the middle where several times he now refers to the king of hearts. The description becomes really muddled and confusing. You're still gonna be able to learn how to do the effect, but for a book that costs $109, I really expected it to be edited more carefully. Again, you're still knowing what you need to do. If you put a little thought into this, you'll understand. But I was disappointed that with all of his discussion about being a maximalist and being attentive to details and other things like that, it was a little disappointing to see that. Within one of the routines, Nate teaches a Barry Richardson gimmick. However, he also, in another routine, talks about toxic. He's not going to teach it, but tells you to look up a YouTube video. He also suggests that he didn't really want to look up who uncovered it to have to credit them. So again, when he talks about being a maximalist, I think that applies to his magic performance. I don't deny that, but I don't think that it applies to him as an author. From the standpoint of the design of the book, there are no page numbers, which I went through and I ended up adding page numbers myself because it was very difficult to know where to go. I 
included the page numbers at the beginning in the table of contents. And I just think that if he had had an editor or someone else who gave him feedback on this, open, honest feedback, they might have suggested to him, most books have page numbers and it's a little confusing when a book doesn't. Am I being picky? Maybe. But here's where we get into the third part of the discussion, which is, is this book for you? And for me, at $109, I have different expectations than I do for a book that, say, costs $40. Who's this book for? Well, you're going to need to be a stage or large parlor setting performer to achieve most of what he is suggesting in this book. Other than Constellation, I'm not really sure that most of this will play for your casual group of friends. I think it's going to require a much larger audience to get the most out of this book. So I get why he says at the beginning that this book is for professional performers. The price point, the material, and the thinking behind it probably aren't going to help the amateur magician that much. It's certainly geared towards professionals. Are the tricks great? Yes, the dollar and cards across I think are wonderful. And if those are the only two things that you get out of the book, well then you spent about $50 on each of those effects. A complete bargain if you're a professional performer who makes money performing this material. Even if you only take some of the thinking behind those effects and apply it to your own routines, it still could be totally worth it. But this is not going to be something that's for the casual or occasional performer. I think you know I'm not really a fan of the limited release type verbiage. I noticed that Vanishing Ink has mostly dropped off most of the descriptive language about how many copies it's limited to, so kudos to them for that. Originally, this was limited to 1,000 copies, and my copy is somewhere around 500, which was purchased a few years ago. So there's probably a couple hundred copies left, or maybe a hundred left. And that's the way I tend to think about this, is that every book is limited release. Nothing is printed in perpetuity or forever. So there's really no reason to advertise something as limited release, unless, of course, you're trying to portray that there's more value because other people can't get it and you should get it now due to a scarcity mindset. Enough about that. It's not fair of me to keep picking on it, but I'm just not a fan of that type of approach. So how did I end up with this book? There was quite a bit of buzz about this on Facebook, and I saw it and was interested, particularly in the dollar illusion, which I really do think is probably the best thing in the book, and the thinking behind it is wonderful. So should you buy this? Uh, again, if you're a professional performer and you are looking for something that you know this will fill that gap for you, then sure, go for it. I think that if you're a casual performer who just wants to read some thinking by Nate, I don't, I don't know that this is gonna fit the bill for the price. If you have the money to blow, do what you want, but I want to be clear that most of my audience, I know that money is short, especially at times like right now, and so you're not just wanting to throw it around. And if you're an amateur or a part-time professional, then I really think that your money would be better spent elsewhere. I think that some of the other books that I've reviewed can give you similar illusions or the end result, the effect on the audience. When it comes to performances, I think you'd be better off buying Maximum Entertainment for $40, and then you could still pair it with two other books on different effects and things that you would like to put into your show. I certainly think that every artist has the right to charge whatever they want for their material. And in this case, most of these items are straight from Nate Staniforth's professional repertoire. I have no doubt of that. However, I also think that the books that I'm getting from, for example, David Regal, Approaching Magic and Interpreting Magic, those items are from his professional repertoire. And you get a really thick book of essays, material, etc., for $75. Is it fair to compare those two? Maybe not. My only point is there is more value out there. Would I acquire more of Nate Staniforth's thinking? Yes. I would like to see it at a different price point and potentially be a thicker or bigger book, but there is value within the pages of this book if you're the right performer. Let me circle back after giving you the bad and telling you that I don't necessarily recommend it for an amateur or part-time professional. I still think that this book has a lot of really great stuff in it and I'm not gonna get rid of my copy. I will reference this book, and there are things that I got from the book, but I'm not sure that I got $109 worth of value. Your mileage may vary. If you absolutely love this book and think that I'm full of it for suggesting that it's not for everybody, 
please let me hear from you down in the comments below. Well, they can't all be glowing reviews, so I hope that you enjoyed this review, even if it doesn't encourage you to buy the material. I want to say thank you again to everyone for watching, for subscribing, for liking, for participating in the contest. We are still going to do more giveaways in the future, so be sure to stay tuned. As always, if I didn't answer your question, please let me know because I am an open book. And until next time, keep reading.